Hello, my name is John Stewart, and welcome to Cello Chat. Today we're going to talk about the various parts of the cello. I call this getting to know your cello. Starting at the top of the cello, we see the scroll. Now the scroll is a decorative portion of the instrument that serves no real acoustic purpose. However, it's quite beautiful. Scrolls come in various designs. This is the classic swirl design. However, you'll see scrolls here that are made uh, to look like lion's heads or fish heads. These are the pegs of a cello, and they're used to increase or decrease the tension upon the strings, thus affecting the pitch of the cello. Pegs are made of various materials. This is made of ebony, but also you'll find cello pegs that'll, that are made of boxwood or rosewood. The pegs are housed inside the peg box. And you can see that the shaft or the longer portion of the pegs uh, are used to wrap the string around. This long black piece of the cello is called the fingerboard because that's where our fingers travel upon. This is usually made out of ebony. It's a very hard wood. This is the neck of the cello and it connects the scroll and the peg box to the body of the instrument. The cello consists of two plates, the top plate and the back plate. The top plate is made of spruce. It's a very light wood and it vibrates freely. The back plate is made of maple. It's a very hard wood and it reflects the sound out. Here on the side of the cello, we see what's called the ribs of the cello. Now this is a very thinly cut piece of wood. Actually, it's one, two, three pieces of wood on each side. One, two, three. That have been cut very thinly and then use, using steam and heat bent to this curved shape. You see here on the top plate two openings, two holes. These are called F holes and they let the sound of the cello come out. This piece of wood right here is called the bridge. The bridge transmits the sound from the string to the body of the instrument. And this bridge is made of spruce. This is called the tailpiece. And it attaches the strings to the lower part of the cello. This also transmits sound from the bridge to the lower end of the cello. In the earlier days, they used ebony for the tailpiece, or boxwood, or um, rosewood. However, today you find different materials. This, the material of this particular tailpiece is plastic. At the very bottom of the cello, you see this long rod that protrudes from the bottom, and this is called the end pin. And there's a screw attached to it that allows you to adjust the length of the end pin. And this is very practical because every cellist has a slightly different body makeup. 
Some cellists have a longer torso and some have a shorter to torso. Some have longer arms, some have shorter arms. Even the height of the chair can affect the end pin. This is the bow of a cello. And this long wooden part here is called the stick. Sticks are made, in a made from a variety of materials. This one is made from a South American wood called Parambuco. But you'll also find cellos, cello sticks that are made from Brazil wood or carbon fiber or fiberglass. This square piece of wood right here is called the frog. And this attaches the hairs from the lower part to the tip of the cello, cello bow. At the very back side of the cello bow, you'll see a screw. In this screw, if you turn this screw to the left, you decrease the tension on the hairs because the frog is moving closer to the tip, making the hairs looser. If you turn this screw to the right, the frog moves in this direction, increasing the tension on the hairs. Now the hairs of a cello bow are made from the tail of a horse. The reason they use the tail of a horse is that if you take one of these hairs and place them under a magnifying glass, you'll see that each one of these hairs have, 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 uh, has little barbs on it, kind of like barbed wire. And these barbs hold the rosin. Now rosin is dried tree sap, and that's something that we apply to the, the hairs of a bow. And rosin is a very sticky sub substance, and it's because it's sticky that it really grips the string and creates the friction, which makes the sound of the cello. Going back to the cello real briefly, let's talk a little bit about cello strings. Now, the cello has four strings on it. The C, the G, the D, and the A. Now, in the early days, the material they used to make cello strings out of was goat gut, the guts of goats. And they still use that today. It has a very warm sound. Excuse me. However, they use other materials today besides goat gut. Um, you'll find steel or alloy, and at the core you can see synthetic gut, perlon. So there's a variety of materials used to make cello strings. Well, that's all the time we have today in this episode of Cello Chat. Thank you very much for, for your time. Mm -hmm.